The year is 2084. The Earth is in ruins. Decades of nuclear war have left most disc golf courses unplayable. Innova discs have become obsolete because most of the cute animals they are named after have gone extinct. Luckily, for those who build courses in their fallout shelters and underground bunkers, doomsday discs live on. Let's learn about their discs now, while there's still time. These are our first impressions. Hey everyone, it's Greg from Six Sided Discs. Make sure you watch until the end of today's video to find out how you can win the Doomsday Discs that we didn't lose while making this video. Doomsday Discs is certainly different from your average disc golf company. The following excerpt is from the About Us page on their website. It reads, quote, Doomsday Discs is a disc golf brand that was created with your survival in mind. Make no mistake, when the end of modern society comes, there's nothing we can do to help you. But you can help yourself by throwing excellent discs while civilization still stands. And by building a stockpile of premium plastic for the apocalypse, when there's nothing left to do but pass the time scavenging for food and throwing discs through incredible dystopian landscapes, you'll be glad that you've prepared with a great collection of top quality discs. Playing disc golf just might give you the mental fortitude you will need to be a survivor. So dark, you sure you're not from the DC universe? So Doomsday Discs takes their marketing pretty seriously. There are dozens of blog posts about our ultimate downfall as a society on their website, and their approach to discs is unconventional at best. From oversized prototypes to unapproved 16-speed drivers, or... Is this an ice cream lid? <laughs> Doomsday Discs just does it differently. So what can we learn from exploring Doomsday Discs lineup? Well, we'll find out in just a moment, but first, a brief history of Doomsday Discs. Doomsday Discs was founded during the heart of the pandemic by a small group of disc golf enthusiasts who are also self-branded preppers, aka people preparing for the inevitable end of days. Interestingly, they say they are a decentralized business run by a team rather than an individual, and this approach goes far beyond concept and marketing. Team Doomsday members vote on disc names, flight numbers, plastic names, and more. They are literally helping to define every aspect of the company. Doomsday utilizes five different plastic manufacturers, four of which had never worked in disc golf before. All of these things combined help Doomsday to create some truly unique discs. First, let's start off with one of their most unique discs, the WMD or Weapon of Maximum Distance. The WMD is a 16-speed driver with three glide, negative two turn, and two fade. And it also weighs in at a whopping 188 grams. And I know what you're thinking. There's no way that the PDGA would approve this disc. And you're right, because it's not approved. In fact, Doomsday's own marketing touts the fact that it's not approved. The width of the rim is so big, I almost can't fit it in my backhand grip. Lucky for us though, Caleb can get it in his hand, so let's see how it flies. And I think the first thing we have to say is this disc lives up to its name. Caleb only put about 80% power into this throw, and this disc still had some juice on it when it hit a tree at around 400 feet. Now it is definitely less torque resistant than I expected for a high speed driver, Throwing it on a forehand, it almost immediately burned out and rolled over. But I think if you got it high enough in the air, you might be able to get some solid distance from it. Now, there's really only so much we can say about this disc considering it's not approved for sanctioned tournament play. But if you're looking for something different and unusual to throw during your casual rounds just for a bit of fun with your friends, this might be worth a look. Next, let's take a look at a disc that actually is approved by the PDGA, the Flat Earth. The Flat Earth was one of Doomsday's first two discs approved by the PDGA. In fact, it was approved on the same day as The Plague in April 2022. Our Flat Earth is in Abduction Plastic, which is an opaque blend and feels a little bit like Star Plastic from Innova, but maybe just a hint softer. With flight numbers of 55-10, you might expect the Flat Earth to be a fantastically straight midrange, 
or at least something close to it. But in our testing, it seemed more likely to hold sort of whatever line you put it on. If you put it on hyzer, it would hold that hyzer. I think we would rate the flat earth with a zero turn and a one fade. Next, let's move on to another mid-range, the Despair. The Despair is a 5-5, negative 1-1 mid-range, so let's see how it compares to the supposedly understable flat earth. And despite having slightly more overstable flight numbers than the flat earth, the Despair is much more understable than our flat earth. The flat earth would at least hold the line that we put it on if not get some fade, while the Despair was super understable. Unfortunately, the Despair was one of the discs that we lost during today's video, but if you're looking for a nice understable mid-range, it was consistently understable for us. Next, let's move on to a high-speed driver with the Pestilence. The Pestilence is a 13-speed understable driver with 5 glide, negative 4 turn, and 1 fade. Today we have it in Toxic Waste, which is a durable premium plastic with a bit of flexibility and decent grip. It can vary from semi-transparent to totally opaque and has toxic splotches of black and other colors mixed into the blend. While the flight numbers of the Despair and the Flat Earth were a bit off, the Pestilence flight numbers are just right. And that's exactly where the disc goes. Right, right, right. It is super understable. On every throw, it almost immediately flipped over and never even came close to coming back. Next, let's move on to one of their very unique discs indeed, the Landmine. The Landmine is unusual. This is an ice cream lid. <laughs> a two speed putter with two glide, zero turn and two fade. I'm honestly surprised it's not a one speed. It certainly looks slower than most of the one speeds we tested in a recent video. The Landmine is in weapons grade plastic, which is a semi-stiff base plastic. And I have to say the Landmine was a huge surprise. It looks and feels like a gimmick, like a joke, like it's not gonna fly at all. But surprisingly, if you rip it hard on backhand, it actually handles that torque and rides it out and gets a nice stable flight. While we were testing at a local course, I thought it might be fun to see if I could throw it on a forehand and I'll be darned if it wasn't half bad. Wow. Right? Yeah. Great. Amazing. <laughs> I'm honestly blown away that the landmine might actually be usable, or it would be if we didn't lose it in today's video. <laughs> Nevertheless, we do have something similar to the landmine that might fill its shoes. The depth charge. The depth charge is nearly a carbon copy of the landmine, with just a minor difference in flight numbers with a one fade instead of two. And there's not a lot to choose between shape and size here on the landmine versus the depth charge. However, the depth charge does come in a different plastic called Collapse, which is a super soft rubbery blend. It's much grippier than the weapons grade plastic blend of the landmine and considerably more flexible. It is also just as overstable. So while the flight numbers are different, it's really hard to choose between the two flights. Moving on now to the Bleak. The Bleak is a straight throwing putter rated at 2-4, negative 1-1. We have the Bleak in two different plastics, Ration, which is a stiff base plastic, and Glow Isolation, a slick semi-transparent plastic. We're told the white discs usually glow blue, while the gray discs glow green. The Bleak is an aerodynamic, very domey putter, and it feels quite big in the hand. So let's see how it flies. Well, the Bleak has to go in the flight numbers don't matter category of this video because this thing is surprisingly overstable. In both plastics, it had almost no turn at all. The ration base plastic Bleak was so overstable and got so far left, even though Caleb did leave it a bit low, that we somehow overlooked it and also lost it in this video. Let's move on now to the prototype Bunker Buster. The first thing you need to know about the Bunker Buster is that it is a super class disc. Like the Zephyr, Condor, or Super Dillo, 
A superclass disc is a much bigger than your average disc. For example, the Bunker Buster is 24 centimeters in diameter compared to just 22 from the WMD. The Bunker Buster prototype is also heavy. Even heavier than the overweight and unapproved WMD, it weighs in at 196 grams. With flight numbers of 7, 4, negative 2, 2, the Bunker Buster comes in as the biggest and heaviest 7-speed on the market. Now, we should also say that this prototype, like the WMD, is not PDGA approved. It was actually released by Doomsday as a public fundraiser for a couple who lost their belongings in a house fire last year. So, will the Bunker Buster buck the trend of the slightly askew flight numbers so far? All right, so here's what we can say. It definitely does have negative two turn, at least, maybe more. But on any of these throws we put out with it, we never saw two fade. So this prototype is definitely fun to throw. It's definitely different and unique, but I don't think anyone's gonna to be too upset that they can't throw it in a tournament. Unless of course you really wanted a 196 gram seven speed roller disc. Don't despair though. While the outlook so far has been bleak for Doomsday, there's every chance this next disc may land. Mine is an opinion that while the bunker buster was a bust, and the flight numbers of the flat earth were tainted with the pestilence of toxic waste, all we need is a disc with depth. Charge your batteries, prepare your weapon of maximum distance, and let's head for the first sign of a dystopian future, the Blackout. The Blackout is an eight-speed fairway driver with five glide, negative two turn, and one fade. We have it in three different plastics today, including Biohazard, a semi-transparent blend with the same splotches as toxic waste, but with a much softer, gummy feel. We also have it in Toxic Waste, a durable premium plastic with a bit of flexibility and a decent grip. It can vary from semi-transparent to totally opaque, and once again has toxic splotches of black and other colors mixed into the blend. Finally, we have Radioactive Waste. Radioactive waste plastic looks and feels similar to toxic waste, but the radioactivity has left a glowing effect in the plastic enhanced by a UV blacklight. And as I alluded to before, the blackout is by far the most impressive disc we tested today. Thrown on Anheuser can get a nice, smooth turnover for easy shot shaping. Thrown flat, the blackout gets an easy, smooth turn but doesn't fully burn over, making it great for hitting specific lines in the woods or getting effortless distance off the tee. Thrown on a hyzer, the blackout flips up nicely and often has a nice late turn, again providing a really unique shot shape before getting a faint fade at the end of its flight. We didn't see much difference from plastic to plastic in how the blackout flew, so it may just come down to preference and how stiff or gummy you like your plastic but it was by far the most useful Doomsday disc we tested and one that we would actually recommend trying in your bag. Doomsday discs was full of surprises. I blindly ordered these discs at random and considering we got two unapproved discs with the WMD and Bunker Buster, the extremely unusual but useful landmine and depth charge, and the really impressive and easy flying blackout, there's clearly a great variety of discs available from Doomsday. With their unique marketing and team-oriented approach, Doomsday just might have something that other brands don't, a grassroots movement of loyal customers. If you'd like to win this stack of Doomsday discs, make sure to like the video, subscribe to our channel, and leave a comment down below about your favorite boutique brand. What do you like about them? Is it their marketing, their plastic, their discs, whatever. We'll draw the winner a week from the day this video releases. For Six Sided Discs, I'm Greg. We'll see you in the next one. If you like this content and want to see more, please consider liking the video, subscribing to our channel, or supporting us on Patreon. Your support makes this content possible. And as I alluded to before, the blackout is easily the most impressive. I think we would rate the flat earth. I think we would rate.
Dragon Mart? Oh my god. That's good? So good. That's crazy. <laughs> Playing disc golf just might give you the mental fortitude you will need to be a survivor. So dark. You sure you're not from the DC universe? So dark. Cut.